Terminating the order. I'm starting recording. Give me one sec. Sure, just let me know when. <laughs> Mayor, if it works with you, I'll just kick it off and then turn it over to you. Yep. Be fine. Okay. We'll go. <clears throat> Okay. I have no gavel this evening, so I'm I'm using my fist here. Um, thank you all for showing up this evening. This is a special meeting of the Terre Haute City Council. This evening we are going to have a. <laughs> this evening we are going to have a uh, conversation between the council and the mayor regarding the city of Terre Haute and the uh, plan for our ARPA funds. Uh, there will not be any public comments this evening. Um, this is more of a, a session for information gathering. Uh, so at this point, I will, do, do we need to take roll call, Michelle? Okay, if we could do that. Councilperson Aller. Councilperson Azar. Here. Councilperson Boland. Present. Councilperson Carlson. Present. Councilperson Devon. Here. Councilperson Elliott. Here. Councilperson Garrison. Present. Councilperson Loudermilk. Councilperson Nation. Here. Seven are present, two are absent. Thank you. At this point, I will turn, uh, turn this over to the mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Um, I've given you a packet of materials here. I'm gonna walk through a couple of things here specifically and then I'll reference a couple of things. Um, first of all, the original plan when this meeting was scheduled, the original intent was to have Baker Tilly and RJL Solutions come and present tonight what you saw if you went to the meeting at the county annex. But it was decided to combine the meeting so we wouldn't have to do it twice and, and you know pay them twice and all those kinds of things. So all of that was done on the 11th, I believe, was the date of that. So then we had a council meeting that I was not at, I was out of town, um, and you had all requested that we have this meeting tonight. Fine, we can have 10 more of these meetings if you would like. That's whatever the pleasure of the council is. Um, but I had to put some materials together for tonight because I was not prepared to do what we're doing tonight necessarily because there's still unknown pieces of this and I'll walk through all of that. There are some things that are really starting to form up really, really well and there's other things that we're not quite there on. So what I've given you, the main reference document is this ARPA plan. I believe it's a seven page document in front of you. ARPA plan update. So this aligns with the strategic plan that you received when I presented this. These buckets are the underlying sections. So housing is first in here, housing is first on this. You have this to reference if you need to, but I only printed it. I'm not going to go through that again. I just wanted to reference that everything in here aligns with the order that things are in what I had already presented to the council. So the first thing is housing, the housing bucket. So I'm gonna walk through this and then you guys can ask questions on this section before we move on to the next section. I will have some reference to a couple of other things. Just once we'll reference it, but it may apply to several sections here. So as a reminder, um, we've identified a $5 million bucket for housing development grants. County's got $5 million and the city has $5 million for a total of $10 million in the city in the county, uh, Terre Haute and Vigo County. What will happen next will be an MOU will be developed with Thrive West Central. The city and the county have decided that we'd like for them to present a proposal to us to see if we want to use them. I think we will, and I'm going to reference that document in just a second that says Thrive West Central on it. Um, they will need, they're working on that right now, which is the Ready Funds, the Homes for the Future Ready Fund program. And we want it to be almost identical to what we do in the city and the county with our ARPA funds. So they will develop the MOU and then they will share that with us. It'll tell us what their fees will be. It's most likely 5%. Uh, that's typically what their fees are for everything that we do with Thrive. Um, and so then I would, take you to the Thrive West Central Homes for the 
future program overview that you have. This is for the homes for the future. You don't have to go through all this tonight, but you will see that we will have a program that will be very similar to this. So it walks you through the process of what you need to submit for an application to be funded, um, you know, what the criteria is going to be, the award process, eligible projects, all infrastructure related, and a timeline. Once again, this is for Homes for the Future, the $1.8 million that West Central Indiana received, and this program will roll out this fall. So we will have a program that will have to be on our own document that we have a memorandum of understanding and a grant um, you know, description. And then we will agree or, or not agree to engage with them to manage those funds for us. So let me walk through the rest of these things just real quickly of the process and then we'll, we can focus on just the housing part. Um, they are in the process of doing a regional housing analysis that will be completed by June 15th. So it'll be an inventory of Terre Haute and Vigo County, of how many we have of single family homes, duplexes, multifamily units, all that. We will have that um, information back for all the counties, but you know we're focused on Vigo and, and Terre Haute. They say they'll have that done by June 15th, um, so we'll see. I expect them to complete the development of our grant program by July 15th, so that would give us something to review by July 15th. That would be more meaty than this, but similar to this, with a memorandum of understanding um, to do business with them, and then we'll make a decision whether we do that or not. So then what happens is, I've got on here at point number five that either at the August 3rd or the August 10th meeting, they will come. They will be required to come in front of you and present their program and their MOU to ensure that the council is willing to support that. Um, we'll know what you know the criteria is to be funded, all those things. Now that could change, but I'm hoping it doesn't. I would love for this to do this in August because we need to start rolling the money out. So that is the plan. So then what happens next? The council will approve or deny that appropriation. We will bring an appropriation that same night. That's what will drive the discussion for them to do their presentation, take it under advisement, vote on it to the next meeting, table it, whatever you would normally do on that. But you'll decide whether you want to approve it or deny it before we take the next step. Um, if you approve it, then we will deliver the funds to Thrive sometime after that based on whatever the agreement is, which I'll show you that next. The grant agreement that you have here, so, um, let me see how many pages. I think it's about 16 pages, maybe more. It says grant agreement. Everybody that gets funded will have to sign a 16 page grant agreement with all the criteria that you're responsible for to and once you've been selected, then you'll have to do this. That'll be the next formal step that you take. So there would be one of these for Thrive. They would be the ones that would sign the grant agreement based on the criteria that's developed that we approve, the city approves it, and then they will open up the applications for people to solicit for the funds. Um, we'll advertise that, they'll advertise it, it'll be in all the media, everybody will know, all the developers will know, all the people that build houses, Anybody we can think of, uh, banks, everybody will, will know that this is opened up for a period of time. Um, that will end on September 15th. So they will gather all the applications for potential funding opportunities with housing um, and then decide over the next few weeks um, which projects qualify and that we all approve for that. And then future housing grant funding rounds will be announced at a later date. So there's multi steps to this, as I'd shared with you before. Um, you know, every appropriation, so this will be one of the first ones that will come to the council. It'll be a separate appropriation to fund the housing component. Um, Thrive will come in and make the presentation, just ask questions of me, them, everybody. Um, and then decide whether you're going to approve that appropriation or not, whether it's in that meeting or the next meeting or the following meeting. And then the program then will roll out once we deliver the funds to them. Um, we will write one check for $5 million. They will hold that money and they will disperse it until it's all gone. That's the way the system works. 
So um, I feel really good about this one, um, but I need to see what they put on paper now, the actual documents. But in the conversations we had, the commissioners have met with them multiple times. I've met with them regarding the Homes for the Future project. Um, so I think we're on the right track, but it'll still be their proposal will have to be something that we accept in order to move forward with the housing component with Thrive West Central. So let me open it up for questions for, at this point for the housing component. Go ahead. Um, Mayor, if at the end of um, some period of time we haven't spent the $5 million, or I'm sorry, Thrive hasn't administered out and uh, handed out the $5 million, what happens to the balance? There'll be a round two until it's all, we have until December of 2026 to expend all the funds. Okay, so. They'll do whatever, how many ever rounds it takes to expend every cent of it. And for that first round, you may have said this, but I didn't catch it, when does it end? Uh, September 15th will be when you have to have an application. And if they meet these other timelines, it may have to shove back a little bit. Yeah, I don't I think it. it'll be sooner. I got that, but okay. what, I'm, what I'm really asking is, how long does Thrive have to administer the first, uh, uh, to administer it before they say, okay, now we're starting round two? Um, as much time as they need. So let's we'll see how many applications we get. Let's say you get a million dollars worth of applicants, then we've got four million dollars to spend over the next 24, 25, and 26. Okay. So round two would probably kick in the first of the year, I'm guessing. Okay. You know, something like that. I'm Enough time to write checks to all the people that are awarded and then start the accounting process and the fall, you know, all the stuff we have to do with the feds to track all those dollars and see the impact they have on the community. And at the end of the spend period, which is the end of 26, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if there's money left, then what? It'll all be spent. It'll have to be because it has to be spent by then or it, I guess it goes back to the federal government. Right. We don't want that. I'm going to guess it'll all be gone within two years. Okay. That's my guess. I think there's going to be a big demand. Okay. Thanks, Ayil. Council Person Elliott. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's their history with doing these types of grants? You, you say they are working on it for uh -huh. the ready, but have they actually ever gone through the process and made grants? Oh, yes, they do a lot of grants. No, I mean to, to developers, to builders. To no, builders. not to housing, no. I don't think not to housing, done that. so they haven't done I don't know, I'm not familiar with any entity any, that's done Anything that. That, they've, no. that they've done. Just lots of grants, but not so, housing. So we have, we have no idea what, uh, what we're going to want in the way of, of uh, deliverables and measurable outcomes. We will as soon as we sit down and start, once they complete the ready thing, because that's got to be done first, then we will sit down and get all that. Well, they'll have to get our MOU. I guess it's going to be in our MOU, yes. what we expect in yep. the way of deliverables. So and I would expect we start outcomes. on that in a few weeks. They'll be ready now, to go. Why, why, why would we want to give them $5 million up front? Because that's the way the system works. If we well, don't commit those funds. I mean, grant, grants can work both ways. Sometimes they can, can be on a reimbursement basis. Sometimes they can be on an upfront well, basis. Well, they will be on a reimbursement basis with Thrive. People will have to submit no, we're, bills. We're, to us, it's mm -hmm. it's not on a reimbursement basis. To us, they're getting the money up front. Well, but this there's only two categories that's like that. Housing is one of them, yes. Okay. When Baker Tilly says we need to write the check, and then they're responsible to do the federal tracking with us backing that okay. up. Okay, well, I'll push Baker Tilly on that, yep. I guess, when yep. the... When the, That's uh, their when the time comes, because for those types of that type that size of a program, it just doesn't make sense to release all the money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's what they recommend. It, it doesn't make sense to me. So they recommend that uh, because uh, are we earning interest on this money? Right now we are. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I I would mm -hmm. rather we continue to earn the interest and thrive start to earn it. So here here's the other thing I'll just throw out as a caveat. In the debt ceiling negotiations, one of the things that the Biden administration seems to be open to having a conversation about is clawing back the ARPA money that's not spent. The, the ARPA money? Yes. I've heard that. So I just got a call from our lobbyist telling me that we need to pick up the pace. But yet the rules are yep. you got till 26 to do it. Yep. And now they're, now they're going to change we, the rule and shorten it up. But if we commit this, if we write the check to them, they can't call okay. back. <clears throat> well, they'll get slayed if they do that. 
could and be. communities Let's like ours. It's, it's in the negotiation. They, they need to send ARPA money back. Yeah. I, I thought they were talking about more VRC money. and They're talking about all of it. Uh, so I don't know if the, if the speaker will win that. That's what they put on the table. But all I know is I've told by the people who are in the halls of Congress that that conversation is still ongoing, if that's a possibility. So Thrive will be will be picking the, uh, making the awards? Based on our criteria. All, in, all our criteria. Okay. So do we have any clue what our criteria are going to be? We're getting there. We're using the same information. This is this is a pretty good document. Well, I, I just got that. And I haven't had I know. a chance to no, read I mean, it. Just that's, and I'll, and I'll read so, it. And then it'll all be delivered for everybody to see prior. I I don't have it yet. They okay. haven't produced it. I mean, I'd, I'd like to know the number of bedrooms we're going to get for $5 yep. million. Dollars we'll have all that. In our community. Yep. I, that's, 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 that's what I want to know. To me, that's There'll be that's categories. There'll be categories because there'll be some... Monies that will probably need to go to um, more lower income housing and then the traditional $250,000 homes that we need. Both. Huh. Okay. Well, that'll be an interesting. And it'll all be infrastructure that we're funding. So, sewer taps, utilities. Sidewalks. We're not funding the house. We're funding infrastructure. Okay. Well, that helps. Yep. Uh, now we got a lot we don't know about what's going to be in that MOU, and and I hope we get it ahead of the. Oh, day you'll of, get it the yeah. day of their presentation. Well, we won't. Huh? We'll, move, we'll move it back if it's not ready. Well, I mean, we need plenty of time. That's one we'll need time to study ahead of time. Oh, and it'll, yeah, it'll, or this, I think once we get through this, and I feel good about the Homes for the Future program, which will happen soon, um, then we can develop ours and share it with you when we get a draft. You may okay. have it three months ahead of time. Okay. You may not be able to meet the August deadline. I yield. Councilwoman Crossan. Yes, Mayor, are we talking about, um, all new housing here? Yes. Okay. Has any thought been given to money for rehabbing houses? A little bit. That's more difficult. It's a lot more complicated to evaluate potential people and whether they're a worthy um, recipient of those funds because then you're talking about individual people that own properties versus developers who are building houses that somebody else will buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. I'm not saying we can't do it. I'm just saying it's a lot more complicated. I've touch base and Baker Tilly's done some research and said that's a slippery slope to start working with individual homeowners to rehabilitate their house. Okay. Um, and I guess I'm a little concerned about, uh, I'll look at this more and read, okay. read all the information that we've gotten just today, but I'm a little concerned about us funding housing of $250,000 up. I know we need lots of different kinds of housing in, in Terre Haute, but uh, with the ARPA funds, I, I I just, I need to think about that and understand why, where that's coming from. Um, I, well, the three bedroom homes being built as an example in Terrytown are about 220, 230. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's about what the market bears for a three bedroom, typical house, nothing fancy. Okay. Um, and let's see, I had another question here. So, excuse me. Um, I'll yield for now. Thank you. Councilperson Boland. Um, okay, Mayor, I've read through this Thrive. Evidently, Thrive's been working on this a long time. So, some of this stuff they should already have um, they may. answers to for us once we get to the point where we're able to ask those questions. But when we get down to where it says awards, mm -hmm. it says, uh, are based on a scoring rubric from a selection committee. I wonder right. what that selection committee might look like. Well, we'll see. We'll, d we'll determine what it is. We've so not we'll, done that yet. That'll be part of our memorandum of understanding. So will our expectation be that someone that's representative of the council would Could be, that yep. Committee? And maybe myself or somebody else from the administration. Yeah, it'll be whatever we decide that it is. We will dictate what the makeup of that is. And when you say we, will that be us as we, or will that be you? Well, it'll be presented or? to you, so when they come and present it, if you don't like it, don't fund it. It'll be very easy to stop it. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. But we can't have all of us negotiating that. I mean, I'll have to get something to bring to the table and then see if you, what they give us. And if we like it, if we run it by our attorney and Baker Tilly, um, and we feel good about it, then we'll present it to the council. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone in room? Because I've already spoken once. If somebody else has questions on this, no, I think you're good. I guess on that selection idea, um, there have have you had any thoughts that you're going to take the thrive about how that should look? No, I think because they're basing it on what other communities are doing in the same area, and we'll just see what they come up with, and we'll decide. All they can do is make a proposal to us. That's what I'm asking you to do. Okay. Well, I just think it's important on our part to make sure that. Um, I know we're giving this grant to them, but we're still doing that, that representing the city and, and representing the public. And I think it's important that we be able to say to the public that we've had someone in there looking at this all along and during the process, because $5 million is a big chunk of this money. Thank you. Any more questions, Council, on the housing part? Okay, Mayor, if you want to move on. Okay, public safety, um, radios. Um, we, last year, we, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a review here because I've heard there's a couple of council members that have had some heartburn about this, which is unfortunate. Um, last year, we started having serious radio problems. Um, we had firefighters with no radio contact at fire scenes, police officers, radios not working. Our radios are 15 years old. They'd already passed the end of their life. Um, and so we had started making plans to get a new system. Then the ARPA funds came along. And so it made perfect sense because public safety, no questions asked about ARPA spending when it comes to public safety. You don't have to go through all the hoops you do in a lot of other areas because it's public safety. So we went ahead and ordered the radios last year because we needed them. We saved $400,000 at the time we ordered them because of the deal that Motorola had on the table. We went through the state QPA system. It did not have to be bid. We wanted Motorola anyway to match up with the state system. The state has made the investments um, locally in West Central Indiana to support our expanded system um, and capabilities that are on these radios. We started taking delivery a few months ago. The police department's been fully implemented. The fire department is in process of being implemented. There are still pieces that have not arrived yet because of um, supply chain issues, as you can imagine. So um, soon, I'm hoping, we just got a deal, uh, an issue worked out with the state last week to even expand more capacity for us to share channels on the state system. And so they've done that at no cost to us, which the state pays for that. So we're going to be in really, really good shape, probably for another 15 years or so, depending on how quickly radios, you know, last. Um, this is the second time we've purchased radios since I've been mayor. I mean, that's just about the timeline that you're on. So all the other departments in the city need new radios also. But we've not pursued that yet until we get council approval on an appropriation to move ahead. We plan on filing that soon for the July meeting. So on July 6th, we should be able to bring a, a, an appropriation of $3.2 million to the council. And then you will have the opportunity. I'll have both somebody from the police department and fire department will be here to do the presentation, even though we've already purchased them. We've got temporary loan in place, a very inexpensive temporary loan with the state of Indiana. And we're going to ask you to provide the funds to pay that loan off. So we don't have to pay any interest for the next few years. Um, and then we'll be able to purchase outright the remaining radios we need for the other departments. Uh, those radios are not as expensive. They're not as sophisticated. They don't need to be on the state system. They'll just be our own, replacing a 30-year-old system we're currently using for all of our other departments. It is on its last leg. It's a proprietary uh, radio system. So um, goal will be on July 6th. Uh, we'll come and make the presentation to you for the $3.2 million. You can decide Prove it that night, the next week, whatever, the, you know, the following week, whatever, and then we will uh, move from there. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions about the police radios. Council? Council Person Elliott. Uh, Mayor, if ARPA funds were not available to pay for these, 
how would we have just paid keep for the it? loan? Huh? We just keep the loan we have and well, budget I mean, it every year. Sooner or later, you got to pay a loan, repay a loan. Yeah, we have money in there to do out, that. out of what? What fund? Out of the funds that we have principal and interest payments out of. We have multiple funds: CCD, fire, public safety, edit. We have a variety of funds. Okay, so we, can we don't really know which ones, which ones. All we of the use. above. Huh? All of the we above. We would have used all of the above. We, if we need to. Absolutely. Okay, so say those one more time. CCD, edit, public safety, low it. Um, those are the three that strike me that would be qualified for this. And which one, the fourth one? Public, no, three of them. Three. Public safety, low it, edit, and CCD. So, so these weren't ordered until such time as we knew that ARPA funds might be available? No, ARPA funds were available. At the time we... We ordered them because we saved $400,000. Okay, but at that time we knew ARPA was a possibility. I had always intended to use ARPA. It's, if you go back to all okay, the so notes that I yes. shared with the council, yes. absolutely ARPA, yes. ARPA is available. And I shared that with the council on numerous occasions. It's been in every document that we've talked about that had all the projects in it and proposed projects. Those public safety radios. Well, I, I guess I just don't recall ever having to put anything in a budget, you know, for those. Not yet. We'll have to put it in there okay, for next yeah, year. I mean, last last fall we didn't put anything. No, in there. because, because we didn't really budget. know what the final. I mean, we're still taking delivery, so okay. some of that was still happening okay. after the budget was so proposed. So we're we're down the line. We're Board of Public Works authorized this, I guess. Yes, went through the QPA. Board of Works then, approved it. Of course, they can authorize that, and it can happen, and they don't have to worry about how it gets paid. For. No, but I do. Well, and we do. That's absolutely. But okay. I have to and have a place to put it. That, if it's not in the budget, then you guys have to approve additional no, appropriations. I, I understand. I understand. Okay. I mean, just like, well, yeah, never mind. I you? Councilperson Crossing. Yes, I. Um, I am um, more than a little upset that um, these were ordered uh, wherever you intended to pay with for the fund. The first time I remember hearing anything solid about using public, using ARPA funds for this was when you when you presented this PowerPoint that I think you've given us no. a copy of the slides no. of. And two days after that, you got an email from me about a number of things that were in here, including that. Um, I feel, one of, let me say this, my two guiding principles that I've been thinking about since we got noticed that we get our funds were one, that we should not be whittling this money away for what should be operating costs, and two, that we should use this money to bring things to our community that we otherwise couldn't have. Um, and I feel like that this particular expenditure has problems in both of those areas. Um, you say that we've known for quite a while we needed new radios. I have no doubt that we need them. Believe me, I am not arguing against us having new radios <laughs> at all. Um, but it seems to me like radios are one of those pieces of equipment that we know on an ongoing basis where they're going to last approximately, they're going to have a shelf life. <coughs> and that we should be planning for how we're going to pay those. Mm -hmm. If it's 10 years, then we should be planning how each year we're going to put away a tenth of that and so that we'll have it available um, when, when the time comes due to replace them. Um, so I'm just reiterating that I have, have an issue with that. Um, and um, I know I, I wish you had come to us at that time and said, I want to use, I think I want to use ARPA funds for this, and we could have had that discussion prior to the night, but I, I still, I continue to have a lot of problems with this doing that. I do. Well, let me just respond to that. I will pick up the emails and the presentations I've done. It's, it's bets out there. I've got it all, and it's all on the website, so we'll pull it because I've done it at least three times that I can remember. This being the third, that was the third time. So, and then went through the Board of Works, it was in the paper, it was in all the media, I mean, and it was all explained that we were going to use ARPA funds if the council approves it. This has been repeated numerous times. So, sorry if didn't get the message. 
Council, any further questions on the public safety? Oh, yes, is, Council Person Is Bowling. there anything else that's already been approved through the Board of Public Works that maybe we nope. might have? Not that I can think of. Nope. Nope. This one was, you know, the supply chain issues from COVID killed us on parts. And they couldn't make, you couldn't get third party parts for Motorola, couldn't get parts for Motorola. Last year was a disaster for us. I'm shocked that we didn't have somebody get injured or something happen. I'm not trying to fluff it. It's just we were getting regular complaints. It was really bad. Surprised with supply chain issues, we were able to get the radios as well. Yeah, well, we're still. The fire department stuff's not all here, so all right, we, it's and they've had six, seven so, months now. So, it, so it's up to us. I'm sorry, Tim. No, I said I yield. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So it, it's up to us to monitor the Board of Public Works and the newspaper and all this other stuff to see these things. No, my point was that's just another time where I didn't even speak about it, but it was presented there that we were using ARPA funds if the council approves it. If not, we would use other funds okay. that are already budgeted. I mean, we have a you know governmental report section in every one of our agendas. You know, from reports mm -hmm. from the mayor, and reports from this, and reports from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I mean, that would be the spot for that information to be shared with us. Do you guys get minutes from all the meetings? I know they're on the website, but do you receive those? Not the minutes either. Okay. I, I didn't know. I don't get them either. I go to the website to look yeah. for them, but I just didn't know if you did it. There, there are minutes of these meetings prepared? Yes. Uh, Agenda and minutes. Works. Yep. They're all on the I website. Mean, that, that, that's my point. Yeah, we're supposed to look at those then to see what they do? No, I'm, I'm just asking if you got them. They are sent to us. Okay. But, the you know, I mean, sometimes there's things on there that I don't know anything about. The agendas are sent, Earl. I don't think okay. the minutes well, are. Okay, well, I guess the communication could be better throughout yeah. between the various the board. boards, and okay. particularly the ones that aren't, aren't <laughs> elected and appointed, and yet they have the authority to spend. Yeah, they do. And You're right. That, that whole process just didn't make sense. I know. You've had a hard run that the sense. first time you got on the council. I get it. It's, it and is the unique. Public works it's and very the sanitary, unique. And the sanitary board. Well, parks, cemeteries. All of them, they can all spend money. But they have a budget yeah, that but, we approve. We don't approve a, okay, they're all, a lot but they of all, things get approved that aren't in any approved right, budget. But statutorily, they all work the same, all four of those. It's just interesting. I agree with you. I think they ought to update that, but they haven't. They have a lot of power. Okay. You're right. Next item. Okay. Infrastructure, two projects um, that we'd like to fund. And neither one of these will be funded this year. Just say that up front because they're both behind. Uh, the Brown Avenue Stormwater Project uh, that I had presented to you before, it is a roughly $4 million project. It'll be the first project that we have implemented since the Holman Street pipe was put in. You know, so when, when I first came into office, that project was underway. Um, this will be the first effort to collect stormwater in the south end of town, southeast end of town, and connect it with Holman Street to get to Thompson Ditch to get to the Wabash River. Um, we've not had any funding, as you know, if you remember, we um, did not um, create a stormwater fund for the city. We raise sewer rates and we take all of our stormwater projects out of sewer rates here. Um, but this project is a big one just to get, um, get moving in that southeast part of town. There is probably a hundred million dollars worth of work that needs to be done in that area, but none of it's been done. Um, this will be the first project. So we're requesting two million dollars of ARPA funds to go along with two million dollars uh, in the wastewater sanitary budget um, to do this project. The original plan um, was to get it started this fall, but utility companies are way behind. We have to have utilities moved, so um, it's not going to happen. They won't even be able to start till this fall once we give them the go-ahead to move on that. The project will go to bid at the end of the year, so know exactly how much money we need uh, for next year to pay payments on it. And so um, this project will be one that we'll put in the 2024 budget for ARPA 
and for wastewater sanitary district. The second one is the 13th and 8th Avenue overpass. Um, we're requesting $3.5 million, um, which will be part of our match that will owe the state of Indiana. Um, that $3.5 million represents pretty much the stormwater infrastructure work that needs to be done in that area to move the water away from that and separate it and not send it into the sewer system, the combined sewer. Um, but it will be part of our match because we don't pay that directly. You would, this money would be paid to the state of Indiana, to NDOT, um, as part of the match. The match will roughly be, if you flip over to the next page, it'll carry you through. The overall project cost is about $26.5 million. Um, our match is roughly $9 million. We've already paid a million of that so far. Um, this would be 3.5 against that then. And then beginning in 2026, we would owe match payments each year. We negotiated something with them, but we can't firm it up until the bids come back uh, that we'll pay it out of the edit budget um, over time, like we'd originally proposed to do. It's been in our budget for about the last three or four years. Um, so the goal here would be to bring it to the August meeting, um, but only for... I don't think we will bring it to the August meeting, but that was my original plan. But tomorrow we have a meeting, um, with, and we'll get, I'll get an update from MDOT about the status of this project. It's very possible we will just not have it on the agenda, and we'll have it in the budget. So you would address this in October for 2024 ARPA budget. It would be the same dollars that we have here. Um, let's see what else was I going to say about that. I don't think anything. So this isn't anything new. I've talked about this a couple times too. I just, we keep getting more firm information on both of these projects. The design work has been completed uh, on Brown Avenue. The design work has been completed on the overpass. Um, we're just in different stages of this, as I said, that we're not ready to, for construction. And we can't move ahead until we get approval anyway. So any questions on these two infrastructure projects? Council. Councilwoman Crossan. I have a question about moving this into the budget process in October. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to have other questions too, but that's the one that occurs to me okay. immediately. Um, I'm concerned. Is it in any way hampered at that time if we don't pass it? Does it in any way affect the passage of the of the regular budget. I'm, con yeah, I'm concerned that, you know, we don't want to get a situation where we either have to agree to this or it hangs up our, our overall budget if we don't agree to it. Do you see what I mean? Because yeah. we have to pass well, it. We have to pass our regular right. budget by the end of October. Well, no, we would propose it. I want to propose it because I don't want to just keep coming back with appropriations every time till we spend all this money. I think it makes sense, and that's what most communities appear to be doing. There's not been a lot of money spent on BARPA yet. That seems to be still an important, I, I don't know why, but maybe it'll pick up now. We'll, we'll be picking ours up. Um, but what we would do is we would propose that budget and advertise that budget, and then we can just take that out because we can't increase the budget after we advertise it, but you can reduce the budget. So you can just strike that completely out of the budget, and then it doesn't become a hangout. Then that means then... First of the year, we'll have to come back with an appropriation of the same thing that we put in a budget. We'll bring that same thing back as an appropriation. Okay, I think I understand. I just don't want us to be in a situation yeah. where where we can't express our our um, true feelings about a an ARPA funded section mm -hmm. uh, without endangering the entire budget. If you understand. What yeah, I'm and we can just strike the ARPA part, and it'll be a separate budget. So everything else would still be in there. And if you didn't approve the ARPA part, then, I mean, I, well, it, it's fine. I mean, that's not a problem. We just can't add anything to it. We can only reduce. Okay. I yield for now. Thanks. Councilperson Elliott. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor, it's, uh, I guess it's pretty obvious to me that on 13th and 8th Avenue, if we didn't use uh, ARPA, we'd use it. Yes. Okay. On uh, Brown Avenue, if we didn't use ARPA, what would we use? Um, we would probably have to delay the project until we bond out 
and just add it to the bond in a few years. Okay. Um, I don't know how long we'd have to delay okay. it. Maybe well, a year. I, I guess out of all these items that are in here, I've got a little bit of heartburn about Brown Avenue. Okay. Because it's a relatively small number of citizens that benefit from that project, as I see it. You know, they live in that area and drive Brown Avenue mm -hmm. and whatever other streets are, are impacted. I don't know how many square miles of stormwater we're talking about, but uh, you know, I'll, I guess I'll find that out, get an answer to that. Uh, so if you just eventually think about a big square, and this will be one little piece down here in the corner. I, I know, and, yeah. and one it. little piece, you know, it just doesn't seem to impact a, a lot of people. We just got to start doing more of those pieces. Pardon? We just have to start doing more of those pieces. Okay. There's no drainage in that whole South okay. piece of I, the I, I understand I that, but is, is ARPA the right source? That That's my question. Is ARPA the right source if it only benefits you know, a relatively small number of citizens in, uh, in our so city? So, understand. Yeah. That's, understand. That's, that's, that's where my heart goes. It helps us to keep rates down, too, when we do well, sewer rates. And those, and those help people live in the county because they pay. A few people. Yes. Sure, it's, well, mm -hmm. it's it's more than a few people. But they also drive on Brown Avenue and Holman, and they, that's all paid for with those same funds. Okay. I mean, it, I hear you. I, I, I understand I, your I, point. I, I'm not sure how many drive Brown, uh, but I know Holman's, you know, a little bit busy. So, uh, yeah. and going to get busier. So, we picked that section because... It's, we're working north from the Holman Street project, okay. as I said. Okay. And then we'll have to eventually get up to college, and then we're going to have to put another pipe in. Okay. To get, you know what I mean? So we've got, as I said, $100 million worth of work that needs to be done sometime in the future in that area of town. And that was identified by the previous administration. Yeah. Okay. How are you? Council Person Nation. Um, Mayor, I see that the... The project that we're talking about, uh, the Brown Avenue stormwater project, is $2 million. Um, I note that Brown Avenue, uh, this section of Brown Avenue, has Holman Street basically running down the middle of it. Is that, is that about right? It's more like two-thirds is south of it and a third north of it, maybe, roughly, okay. give so, or take. Okay. So this project is going to start north of uh, Holman. Dean, and, and roughly and, Dean Avenue. Yeah, I didn't know where Dean was. Yeah. I just looked it up on my phone. Okay. I didn't know it by, by name. I guess okay. it's just south of Washington uh, is what it looks like. Um, there is a uh, recreation trail on Holman Street. Um, this presents an opportunity to uh, start building a north-south north connectors uh, from that trail. Um, is there a plan to include a recreation trail on either side? Uh, yes, on one side. Highway? It'll be a wide sidewalk. A wide sidewalk yes. like, yes. like you did on 4th Street uh, yeah. through Farrington's Grove? Yes. Okay, great. And um, I note, too, that sidewalks are part of this. Will there be sidewalks on both sides of the street? I believe the last plan we have is on one side, but we can add sidewalks. It's, it's a, it's a right-of-way issue on the other side. That we don't have enough right-of-way issues? There's a few spots that we don't. Some areas we do, we're good to go, but we might have to acquire a couple to put a second sidewalk in. Okay. So in the in the plan we have now, it's just one wide sidewalk on one side in the current plan. Okay. Well, that's better than what we've got now. Uh, yep. Which we have is nothing. Zero sidewalks. <laughs> People walk in the street. All of it. Uh, well, that'll it'll go the length of that from um, Wallace to Dean. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Yep. Um, I also remember uh, when we were talking about sewer rate increases and whether or not we establish uh, a stormwater district and, and all that. I remember that this project was near the top of the list then. It was. And um, I'm sympathetic to trying to get it done. Uh, I think that it's, that, you know, that, like you said, the previous administration had identified this. This is not something new. This is no. something that's been a need for the city for a long time. Um, now, how we pay for it, uh, you know, is 
is debatable. Um, but one of the positives of this situation is it's making us review all of our community priorities uh, that have been that have been like set aside mm -hmm. for a day when maybe we might be able to pay for some of it. So thanks for walking us through this. I'll yield yep. on that. Councilperson Garrison. Yeah, just real quick. I, I had mentioned to the mayor a while back that if we could use some of the opera funds, not not a lot, but some um, in areas like this where we're replacing sewer uh, infrastructure, putting sidewalks on top, that would also be a reduction in the future for sewer rates. So I like some of that because I just think when the sewer rates go up again, you know, that's what we hear about for, for many years. So I'm actually good with doing some of this. That's all. We're able to delay and reduce basically um, by using some money. I, this was a very strategic dollar amounts and projects. Um, you know, the second one helps the edit fund primarily. Um, first one helps our existing revenue streams for wastewater and storm. Water. And I think, you know, to Earl's point, he's, he's kind of right. It's not really that high traffic, I don't think. But when you do this, it will be. And pedestrian traffic, too, will go up. So that's all. Uh, Council personnel. Yeah, okay, just just uh, uh, just an FYI, there was an article in the paper today about uh, Indiana American filing a petition for a significant rate increase in their uh, water rates. So, uh, 14 percent. Just so you know, that's in there. Good to know. I didn't read the paper today. Thanks, Earl. <laughs> Can you take that a little bit farther? Does if they get that approved since our Sewers, since our sewer collections are based on the, that, that, that does that affect our sewer? It, it won't. It's It'll utilization. Just, so yeah, it's, it's all utilization. Yeah, it's gallons. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. I yield. Any further questions on infrastructure? All right. Next item. Okay. City hall facility upgrades. Um, obviously, all of you know that. This building is needed upgrading for a while. There's been different looks at it over the years prior to me getting here and after me getting here. Um, there is some portion of our ARPA funds that we can use on this project easily um, as related to COVID when it comes to heating and cooling systems and all that. Um, we're talking probably about a $6 million project to do everything that we need. There's three phases to this. The first phase will be the city hall roof. Um, we need to put the roof on first because we've got some minor leaking, but it, it's been ongoing for quite some time. So we need to secure the building first. Then the second phase is where we would utilize um, primarily the ARPA funds as related to um, new heating and cooling system and ventilation system. Uh, that's where it fits into the ARPA and the COVID related to COVID. Um, we are working with Amoresco, um, have been for quite some time. That's, um, we're revisiting everything. Obviously prices have changed, project scope has changed a bit, but we'll be doing this in three phases. So the first phase, um, we, we may need a few funds for the roof. Won't know that until we get the bid documents prepared, which should be done in July. Uh, Mike Waldbeezer is doing that on our behalf, a local architect engineer. He's the one that did the Booker T. Washington building that we recently put a new roof on that building. Um, I'm hoping it's less than this. This is a just a hold, if you will, but we'll see. Um, and then we hope to get the roof replaced by the end of the year. The second phase won't really be able to start this year. There's just, it'll be difficult to start it. So the way we were looking at this, we might ask for some funds uh, in an appropriation this year for a portion of the roof that qualifies. And then the second piece would be something we would put in the budget for 2024 of what we would need uh, for next year with the Amoresco contract. And then the third phase would be done after all that's done, probably 2025, and that would be funded with, you know, obviously non-ARPA dollars. We wouldn't need any ARPA dollars for that, uh, but that can't be done until we get the interior done. It, it just doesn't need to be done until we get the interior done. So, um, depending on 
Um, Mike Walbies are getting his work completed in July. I'd like to put something on the agenda for August. Um, my guess is it would be a, a portion of that roof that qualifies, and that's all that we would be bringing for the appropriation. So uh, we'll make that presentation um, at that time. Pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to have to fund it. You know, if we have, if we're not able to use any ARPA funds for any of this, we'll have to bond the work out. We'll just delay starting it. That we're not committed to anything on this project. Council. Other than no. Oh, wait, no, just other than doing the design, and we're paying for that through existing revenue streams, budget line items. Sorry. No. Council. Okay. For now. Next time. Okay. Um, parks update, four of them that um, we previ previously shared. Hertz Rose Park is the first one up. Um, design should be completed by October. We hope to start construction next spring and the park be completed by the end of next year. It's a total remake of the park. Other than the basketball court, it'll be refurbished, but everything else will be brand new in that park. Um, that park was specifically targeted for the neighborhood revitalization project that we're going to be working on, including a new sewer down Locust Street and some other things that will be happening in that neighborhood over the coming years. And so um, housing, we're going to you know, want to incentivize some people for some new housing in that area, et cetera. So um, we wanted to have a major park upgrade that was not your traditional that hasn't received traditional investments in the in the past. And so the park board is excited about this particular one. The neighborhood's excited about it. And um, we'll be seeking funding to do this project next year. Um, don't need any funds this year for it. Uh, Fairbanks Park, phase one improvements. Um, estimated at $1.7 million. There'll be multiple phases of Fairbanks Park. We have not identified funding sources for phase two, three, or four, or five down the road. Um, we will in the future. Um, this will probably take a year to two years to complete phase one with those ARPA funds. Um, we're working with the Army Corps of Engineers now. We've hired a you know, Wabash River consultant to update our Wabash River plan. This is a part of that plan. Um, we recently shared some information with uh, Riverscape and the Park Board regarding this, and we'll be sharing that with the council soon. Um, just starting, to, we've got to make a few tweaks to that presentation before we do that, a few little changes. Um, but this is something we've been talking about for quite some time, but uh, I'm ready to move on phase one next year. Uh, Ray Park, um, we have several amenities down there. We can use revenue loss funds for this. Um, this one does not qualify for the low-income neighborhood, as we've discussed before. The next two do not. Ray Park and Deming Park do not. But we're able to use revenue loss funds to assist us with projects in these two parks. So um, we would, our goal is to, at Ray Park, it's kind of two separate pieces. One is the clubhouse, and we're working on getting that funded and getting that under construction this winter. Uh, but the other pieces of the project, uh, the trail around the park, um, the playground, the shelter, those things are all things that have been included in this budget to be able to do um, along with uh, getting the clubhouse finished as a phase one or maybe a two-phase project. We're still working through that. We'll know more when we're able to get the final um, engineering estimate from Sanders and, and Associates. Uh, and then the Deming Park pool upgrade. Um, we will be seeking ready funds. We were denied the first time, but we should get ready funds in this next round uh, to assist us with the Deming Park pool upgrade. And then we'll use some internal dollars uh, to do that. We hope to do construction on that beginning in um, next year. Um, not sure we can pull that off yet or not. Ratio Architects is our architect. Uh, working on this project, but um, it's moving along, but it'll need those ready funds. So we'll need to apply for those funds this year in order to move that project along. It's about a $3 million project total uh, for the pool. I should have put that in there. I apologize. I did not. And then the last piece is just some additional playground upgrades and splash pads and parks that were on that original list that I shared with you last year that qualify for the low-income neighborhoods. So the park board will 
be working on that, um, where we want to put those, but we want to set some money aside to be able to do additional splash pads and, and playground upgrades in other parks. So we kind of hit all areas of the city with this first round. Um, the rest of that's pretty much similar to what we've talked about in other ones. So I'll entertain any questions on the four park upgrades that we got on the table. Council. Council Person Nation. Um, <clears throat> Mayor, uh, you mentioned revenue loss funds uh, mm -hmm. for Ray Park and Deming Park. Please explain what those are. So if you remember um, when in the first appropriation that the council did, we reimbursed ourselves for revenue loss, but we only used a portion of what we could have taken. I think we're $10 million max. It might be a little bit more than that now, maybe 11 million. And we used a couple of million to repay ourselves for lost revenue. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to do, there's a formula that the feds use that you can determine even if you didn't really lose the money, it's a revenue loss calculation. And so Baker Tilly is updating that for us right now. I don't have the new number, but I think it's like 11 million minus what we've already spent. Okay. So I'll, I'll bring that once I have it. So this is money that we already, ARPA money that we already quote unquote spent by reimbursing ourselves last year? No, no. that money went directly into the budget to reimburse ourselves for lost revenue. Yep. But we could have taken 10 million that. We could have done an appropriation for $10 million and just put it in the bank. You know what I mean? Right. But we did not do that. I didn't feel that was prudent. I wanted to use it on projects and not just have it go into the budget to be spent really on anything. Once it's in the budget, you can spend it on anything. So if you remember our conversations, that was last year, yep. um, we decided to take a smaller amount, leave the rest of that on the table for future use. I, you, I'm remembering now. And, and then you go it. up to that cap, and when you hit the cap, you can't do it anymore. Okay. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. It a while to yep. uh, understand, but I get it now. Does that make Thank sense? You. Yep. I yield. Councilperson Garrison. I heard that too, revenue loss funds, and I was going through here quickly. So that's that's one piece of the ARPA bucket of funds that we have. Is that correct? Well, and it's not a bucket that I created in the presentation that we did. It's just there's different ways you can access the ARPA funds or spend them. And using revenue loss is the easiest. It requires the least amount of paperwork. And that's fine. I guess my question then is, is there a list of all the different types of funds or ways that we could use it? Revenue loss would be one. You can use it for anything if it's revenue loss. So there isn't necessarily an ARPA fund category and these are all the... No, yeah, we will have well, to plug it into the ARPA plan that you've all originally approved, you know, all the different line items. You, we will have to identify that and report it to the feds as revenue loss, and then we can stick it in any of those line items that we want. Okay. It'll be in the appropriation. So whatever you guys decide, you'll get to pick that. Okay, I yield. Councilperson Carlson. But just to be clear, this mm -hmm. isn't additional money. No, to, this is just, this is just money that can be designated. Yeah, so like we got 36 million and then 10 or 11 million of that can be revenue loss. And if we don't spend it in revenue loss, we could still spend it on Absolutely, project. yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. So my, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. I, my preference would be to find things in here and plug them directly in lines that the federal government's determined for the ARPA <clears throat> only use the revenue loss for things that will supplement that. Like some of the, a couple of these parks, you know, a Deming Park pool upgrade will be a significant benefit to the entire community. So that one made sense to me. Ray Park will be turning it into a park that's not there today that people on the south side would be able to use. That's why I looked at that. We could pull it, but if we use revenue loss because we can't do it through the normal channels of, um, you know, neighborhoods that don't meet the income levels, that's part of the ARPA. So carrying that on to what seems to me to be a logical conclusion, the $1 million you have here for Deming Park and the 400000 you have here for Ray Park, are part of the five million at the top for yes for city park that all adds up to you're five just million. saying you would call them revenue loss exactly. and to qualify them exactly okay thank you i yield Council sorry person. maybe i wasn't clear. Uh, uh -oh. mayor is the deming park project is that a million dollars total or three that, million it's three three million okay i missed that yeah, I should have put it in here. I mentioned that earlier. I, I left it then, out. So the, we're going to ask for a million in ready funds. We would have a million of ARPA funds and a million of our own funds. Okay. And then uh, I noticed the uh, design completion dates, December of 2023. Yes, this year. We hope. I mean, that's, it's, it'll, be, it'll be tight. That's but if we don't get the ready funds this year, 
it doesn't matter how long. We'll have to push it out another okay. year. But I presume that would be something that would start at the end of a swimming season and be try, hopefully try to be done before the next one starts. It will have the pool be closed for a year. Oh, the pool will be yes. closed for a year? Yes. Okay. Everybody else that's done the same thing, some will even close longer than a year, but I think it can be done in a year. If you start in November and then open it up the next a year after May, you know okay. what I mean? So it's a significant 18-month 18 18 project, yep. so to speak. Yep. Thank you. I yield. Councilperson Bolin. Um, Mayor, a few times we've heard you reference uh, ready grants. Do we know when uh, we'll know what we? No. You know the legislature approved 500 uh, million. Yeah. Um, if it's on the same timeline as last time, we'll probably apply in August or September and find out in December. And so we'll go ahead and do the design on this, but we'll have to hold the project if we don't get it awarded, and I'll have to find another source of a million dollars. So we'll just hold it for a so year. So a lot of things that we've referenced with maybe using ready grant. That's, the, the, only, will be kind of that's the only one so far. Okay. There'll be, there'll be one more that I can think of. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further questions on city parks? All right, next okay. slide. Okay, small business, not-for-profit, and food deserts. Um, the total combined of the three categories is 2.750 million, uh, 1.750 for small business, 500,000 for not-for-profits, and 500,000 for food deserts. These numbers can be tweaked. That's just what we, that's what I proposed in the, originally. But what needs to happen next, you know, we, we had talked to the United Way, we've been talking with them for a while. They offered their services long ago. We need to, we need someone, we don't have the in-house staff to do this. There's no way, and I don't want to pay Baker Tilly to do this for us. It would be very expensive. Um, but we will need to create these programs and administer the funds similar to the housing thing. This will be similar to housing. So we've asked the United Way to put a proposal together. We've not selected the United Way. They have to do the same thing, just like we haven't selected Thrive. They have to put a memorandum of understanding together, put a program together for all three of these categories that we agree to. And then if we decide to move ahead with them, we will if there's an appropriation. So um, they would be required to come. I'd like for them to have those programs developed by July 15th and then um, come to the council in August, they would come and present, just like Thrive would, present the three programs that we've provided the criteria for, and, and at least, you know, generally speaking, that that's what we want. I have to wait and see it. That's why I can't qualify anything until I see something in writing, and whether I'm okay with it before we even get it to you guys um, and our ARPA team. Um, but they will come and make that presentation and then the council can decide to fund or not fund that. This would work the same way. We would write a check for $2.75 million uh, that would go to the United Way, and then they would begin to roll out the app, round one applications in all three of these categories. Um, hopefully, we would have those announced, um, you know, by September 1st. That's my pushing them along here. Maybe it's October 1st, but I'd like to do it by September 1st. Um, you know, the criteria is going to have a lot to do with uh, existing small business loan processes, things that go through the Small Business um, Development Center at ISU, things that the United Way has already done, examples from other communities, how they're doing it. All this is coming together into, we'll let them pull something together and give to us hopefully by July 15th. And then... Um, separate committees will be selected to um, do this. So back to that original housing question, you know, if we wanted to add a city council person to one of those, we could do that. Somebody from the administration, we'll figure that out once they make a proposal to us. Then we'll tweak that before we bring it to the council that includes that kind of feedback and opportunity to help approve those, um, those grants. Um, I don't know if everything will be awarded in round one. We'll see. I think it'll probably be like housing and there'll probably be a couple of rounds. That's what my gut tells me, um, but we'll see. So questions on this section? Council, Council person Crossing. Yes, have, have, you say they have to do it according to our criteria. What are our criteria? That's what we'll develop. We're, we're just getting ready to start that conversation. Who's we? Me, the ARPA team, the three members of the ARPA team, 
myself, Eddie Felling, Leslie Ellis, our team. And we're going to, we haven't developed those yet, but we're expecting United Way to present us with They're working on a draft right now. And then we'll, 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 when we get it, we'll review it, and then we'll see what changes we need to make to it based on what needs to be in the criteria. So I'll give you an example. Things like priority will be given to those that didn't get PPP loans, as an example. You'll have to have a business plan showing what you're going to do with these funds. There's an accountability matrix that goes along with that. All of that will be included in there that we already know that we have to do for Baker Tilly. All that will be put in there. We just need to decide what the criteria is to make the selection of these folks based on already existing examples out there. We're not recreating the wheel here. I just think that's an ambitious timeline. I, it I, is. I work a lot with the United Way, and they're mm -hmm. very good people there. Um, and um, I'm sure they would want to do a very good job. And I just think if they don't have criteria yet, getting something to um, back to the city by the 15th for approval in August is a pretty ambitious timeline. I think it's very doable, but it's up to them. I can't push them any harder than what we're asking them to present how something. Long, how long have they uh, been aware that they were going to need to get this back oh. to us by July 15th? Maybe a month. Okay. And they're working on it. They say they can do it. That's their date. I mean, they, they agreed that that date's doable. Okay. But if it's not, you know, if it slides back a couple of weeks, I will feel bad about that. I'm just trying to push some of this along okay, do because we... of our original conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You. No. Um, the other thing is I, I'm looking at the, what I'm looking at here is you gave it to us in paper again today, but I'm looking at what you presented, the, the slides you presented to okay, us yes, at, this one. at our meeting in yep. February. Yep. And I'm looking under the small business assistance and then the nonprofits right below that. And, um, yes. So again, are we going to be giving them criteria which are going to say we we have identified, for instance, minority-owned businesses as needing priority, or they'll they'll just score higher. Okay, but okay. have we have we decided what scores higher? I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, these things. These things. Okay. And, and you know, adding um, staff that you'll score if you're going to be able to expand your business and add staff that would be a, a higher scoring thing if you're going to increase your market share in something uh, like a food desert is an example if somebody was going to go do something to increase our opportunities for people to access fresh foods then that would score higher than somebody who was running a food bank let's okay. say or something like that okay but once again, this criteria is not being done from scratch. This stuff's already out there. We already there's already guidelines for not to, not to the nth degree. That's what we're working on is the final pieces of this. Well, I understand that there are examples out there that we can take advantage of, and we should. I I don't have any problem with looking at what other people are doing, but we may also have some things that are very specific to our community as so what, well. Yep, yeah, sure, and that, that's exactly true. And so if they come and make that presentation. You ask those questions, we'll send them back, and we'll modify it. We will not vote on it, not ask you to vote on it. And, and for instance, on the slides anyway, and I don't see anything else about it here, um, the statements about nonprofit support, the $500,000 for, the, $500, for that. Uh, we talk right. about how there are over 1,000 nonprofits in our in our area, in our county, in our city, mm -hmm. and um, how important they are. And I don't disagree with any of that. But that's really broad there. Um, so what kinds of things are we looking to fund for nonprofit groups? I know food deserts you've mentioned, um, but for the non-for-profit, that's separate in your in your uh, breakdown up here. Right. Um, this is so just that's, a statement. That's 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 nothing more than just a statement. Okay. Have we the city being the city? Have we identified areas of nonprofits that? we want to focus on? No, nope, because we want people to submit an application that we can review that will have the biggest impact in the community. We don't know what those might be. Well, if I were a, if I were a director of a nonprofit agency or on the board of a nonprofit agency and I were trying to decide whether we should put the staff time into applying mm -hmm. for ARCA funds, I would want to know how likely it was that we would get funded no. based on the priorities of the city. I wish and we could do that from out. the city's perspective. You know, we apply for a lot of grants and we get denied. 
and we have no idea what our success potential success rate is. Zero. You, nobody does. I'm not talking about success rate. I'm, I mean, of getting the grant. I, I want, but but you know what you're applying for, and you know what and that we, funding source is. And we invest funds. that staff time. And that's time. what I'm saying. Nonprofits. You know, we have nonprofits that provide practically every service that you can think of, mm -hmm. and um, and they also often are very taxed on their staff time. Uh, mm -hmm. to do this sort of thing. So if I were looking at it and it said, well, there's $500,000 here for nonprofits, but it doesn't tell me that they want to do um, mental health programs or they want to do uh, activities for children or they want to do child care or whatever that might be. Um, so I don't know whether it's worth our time to apply for that or not. I mean, again, broad areas that we want to uh, make priority for Okay. I'm following. For so, our ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. So I think we can do that based on the community plan. It's Everything is in the community plan that we're trying to do overall. And so we can single those things out and give categories of areas. But once again, anybody that wants to apply for these funds is going to have to decide whether they're going to do that just like they do every day when they apply for grants. I can't, there's no way we can promise anybody any money until they go through the process. Well, of course, but if I were a housing, if I, for instance, if I were, housing is a separate category here, so I'll use a different example. Okay. That's right. If I were um, a daycare center for adults, uh, for senior citizens, a daycare center for senior citizens, and I were applying in the grand scheme of things for grants, I wouldn't apply to an organization that has a grant process for ha for housing. I'd apply right, to an, right. an organization that has grants available for, for yeah, senior citizens. I agree. 100%. So if we just put $500,000 out there, we could end up with either not very many good applications or we could end up with so many applications it's hard to find the good from the bad. That's my point. So here, here's what I would say to that is this, this is the ARPA fund component of this. My direction and my thoughts and what I would like to do, we'll see what, the, what other community buy-in we get, is we sustain this program with other revenues like casino revenues in the future. So it's not just a one hit thing. It might be for ARPA funds, but there's going to be other funds. We're going to have $3 million a year that come into the local development agreement that will be primarily go to not-for-profits and things like that. That's what the intent of that is. If we create this program, then we want to sustain it beyond the ARPA funds. So this isn't just a one-time wonder. You say, oh, should I jump in or not? You need to understand the process, decide whether you want to invest that time to apply, but then be in it for the long haul, that we can find a way to fund everybody that, that has a legitimate, impactful thing. So there'll be some not-for-profits that will probably submit something that just, they can't do it. There's no way they're going to be able to sustain it. They don't have the business plan for it. They don't have the other financing they need. You know, we don't want to have any grants that just pay utility bills or insurance or for staff. We want to do something that expands their ability to serve the community. And that's what I think I'm saying. Is and that will all be in there. That will all be there. Now, whether you get specific about we cover every category, I'm not sure of that. No. I, I don't know. I can't guarantee that. No, well, and I wouldn't expect you to, but but I, I think we need to help people and give them some direction. Okay. Yep, that's fair. And I think they know that. I mean, they, they've done this before, and it'll be based on that criteria. They being? United Way is an example, Thrive. They're, I mean, Thrive's learned from other communities that have done a housing program as an example. Use them the Fort Wayne model right now, and it's a good community model. It's been very successful. I'm not sure we're communicating, but <laughs> here right now. No, I think so. Um, okay. Yeah, Mike. My, okay. my only comment is going to be it, it, it's going to take these not-for-profits time to put together an yep. application and this information. And I just see that with, uh, with Tina's experiences mm -hmm. with different not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's several months, you know, that is, you know, they have volunteer boards and they only meet so often. Uh, they can only respond so fast. Yep. So uh, that that's a concern for me on uh, uh, on that one. Yep. Yield. <coughs> Any further questions on small business, nonprofit support, and food deserts? All right, next okay. item, please. Early childhood learning facility. Um, we've got a million dollars in the bucket for the ISU program. Estimated project cost there is about $7 million. The county is 
considering committing $3 million to that project, just as an FYI. Uh, they've got ready funding, and then they'll make up the difference on the rest of that. Uh, it increases the seats they have that are public seats, not for ISU staff, but public seats. Um, they're going to have to come in front of the council and present their project. Uh, they're a standalone uh, opportunity here, so they will have to come and do that. Um, I'm told they would like to do that in July. We'll see. I, I'm not sure, but that's what I was told. Um, I, I don't have any other information on this one at this point. They're working through their internal systems to be able to make this, uh, bring this public to you guys and to the county council soon. So you don't know where this would be? Well, they're going to remodel. But it's Originally, they were going to remodel the old nursing building there, a chestnut, 8th and Chestnut. Okay. And then they decided they were going to go and build a separate building, and now, now they're back to the nursing building. That's what I know. Okay. Okay. And do you have any idea why they want to get into this? Well, they're already in it. I mean, they're mm -hmm. going to expand it. They're already in it? Yeah, uh, down here at Marriage Student Housing. My they granddaughter a, goes there. Yeah, they have a pretty good-sized program there. They're going to double the size of their Okay. Expand it. Okay. And it's part of their curriculum, you know, the students get yeah. And you know, all that stuff works. And I, I guess I'd like for this to be a 24-hour program. Yeah, where well, you ask that question, Earl. Uh -huh. <laughs> ask that question when I they will. come to present. Because they're going to say no. I mean, that's what that's I what, know. That's they what need the that. employers say. They need, yep. they need that uh, available for second and third shifts. Yep. And Absolutely. Just, just We've got to that create that. that. Whether it's here or somewhere else, that has to be created in the community. Yes. I yield. Sorry, Curtis. No, here you jumped fine. in a little early there. I'll you're okay. I'll, I'll try and do better. Council personation. Mayor, you said that the county is considering three million for this. The yes. city's one million. Um, how do you think that's going to go? Are they going to say no? Uh, why wouldn't the city pay, pay the same amount that we do? Yeah, and, yeah that's an interesting conversation, Councilman. I, I you are. You want me to answer that now, or you want to keep on going? No, no. Because <laughs> that's I, that, that's the topic of the day. So. Last year, early last year, um, the commissioners and myself met, even you know when, when Brendan was still there too, and we would put all of our projects on the whiteboard at RGL Solutions, everything, and figured out what might we fund with Ready, what might we fund with future casino revenue, ARPA, Edit, you name it, and tried to figure out how to get the biggest bang for the buck. So whatever we spend is the city, whatever we spend is the county. Does that help somebody match to get a project done or does it help a project get done that doesn't require a match, whatever. And so the county's $20 million, they decided based on what was on the board and then they met with all, all the city council members were invited to those meetings, all the county council members. I think everybody came, but maybe one or two um, and just kind of went through this general conversation. Not a lot of detail, but just general, here's the direction. And that's what the county decided out of their $20 million to give, that's their, you know, they'd have to answer that question. I was asked and was willing to consider a million to bring to you, but that's all I can say about that. I, I don't, I think it's a good project. I don't know, we'll have to see if it's, if it's, if they can make it happen. That's the question I have. ISU's program is well respected in the community. It's uh, something that is worth investing in, and I'm delighted to hear that it's going to double in capacity if this gets done. Um, I just remember the squabble over, was it Mullen Flats, uh, the, the intake center there, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if we're headed toward the same kind of. Um, so, I'm sure know, somebody why will. Putting it down the middle, simplistic argument talk about that, but if you look at the Turn to the River project and the city parking lot, city, county, use, utilized parking lot, and a variety of other things, um, we have exceeded sharing costs on a lot of those projects to this point. So I see it as balancing things out in a way where they're doing some things that we don't have to invest more in. We're going to invest in something different something else and the total then works for everybody that's and that's their call on that number but that's how i kind of see it working out 
but not everybody knows all the history, you know, over the last years of, you know, how we got to where we are today. And that's, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing is the executives are agreeing on, you know, one level of, or, or on one plan, and then they're trying to turn and uh, explain it to the legislators and get by. In a way, that's why we had those meetings, though, just to get that, to, so everybody would understand. And I don't know who, I don't remember which I meetings. Right. Yeah. I think maybe you were one I was at, well, but I, I, I went to a couple of them. We weren't at those whiteboard meetings. We were at a one hour right meeting. Right after the whiteboard meeting. Right happened. after the whiteboard meeting. Because we had to get the list so, made up first. Yeah, so and then talked about, you know, mental health things, addictions. Right. I mean, there were things that didn't have anything to do with the city necessarily, but it was all discussed in those meetings. And that's what the commissioners decided to put together. And then, of course, I had mine done before theirs, but there was a few changes. Um, we're trying to get on together on the same schedule now. Sure. We were not on the same schedule. Thank you. I don't know you. if that helps or not. It's it's it's. I understand your point completely, and we'll probably have to do some damage control still. Thanks. I yield. <clears throat> Any further questions on this item? All right. Next. Okay, new to hotel, parking garage, and downtown tourism projects. So there's two projects here. The first one is has been discussed for quite some time. Uh, another parking garage that would support either one large hotel or two separate hotels downtown uh, to support the convention center that's desperately needed for us to be able to utilize the convention center. Um, we are proposing to use $3 million of ARPA funds for the parking garage. The total project cost is probably in the $12 million range. Other funds to support this, we already have a commitment ready, ready one of $4.3 million, an ID, IEDC commitment of $3 million, and uh, the Redevelopment Commission hasn't approved it yet, but a TIF com rough TIF commitment to make up the difference there. So um, this parking garage would either be owned by the Department of Redevelopment or by the CIB. I'm not sure what that structure will look like yet. Um, but it'll need to be built in order to support and create the parking spots necessary for the um, contractual agreements with the with Tim Dora and the hotel franchises that he has. You know, they're already short a few spots now. They didn't get everything back um, that we'd originally. You have to have so many spots for so many rooms and staff and visitors. Um, and so that's why you have to have additional dedicated space to the hotels because of the contractual agreements they have with Marriott and whoever else. Um, this is no different than what we went through with the parking garage we have now. It's just would be another one to support uh, the two hotels or one large hotel um, to make this happen. The project is still an exploratory phase. Uh, Construction could possibly get, begin by the end of next year, but that's an ambitious thing on my part. So there's nothing to bring to the council on that portion right now. Um, you know, I there's just we don't know enough other than just holding some funds to be able to support this project right now. So there'd be no appropriation this year for that. Um, the second piece is facility improvements for the Indiana Theater. As you know, the CIB will soon acquire the Indiana Theater. Um, repairs and improvements for that facility look to be in the $3 million range. Um, the city would contribute a million through ARPA. Uh, the county would um, commit a million dollars through their funding sources. I'm not sure if it's ARPA or not right now. I don't know, but they made that commitment on paper um, with council approval, of course. Uh, later on, and then uh, using TIF funds of about a million dollars to revitalize that building, bring it back to what it needs to be brought back to. There is a operator um, that we will inherit that lease um, to run first run movies in there, and then it'll be um, the CIB will be involved with utilizing that facility for convention related events or other things. So we'll work together with the with the operator, um, with the CIB to uh, utilize that facility. So we can get a lot of other activities and things going on in there. So we're not ready to bring that to the council yet either, just holding that million dollars uh, until we, I'd say in a few months, we'll know a lot more about costs. Um, CIB is hiring um, a couple of firms to um, 
give us the information we need as the CIB and then look into the city and the county and uh, the TIF district through redevelopment to help fund that project. Questions, council personnel. Yeah, so the, the CIB doesn't have any funds for that? Not right now, not with okay. current cash flows. But, but, I think it'll get there. But I thought I saw in the paper they already hired somebody. To... Not yet. We've, we're have reviewing. I thought the guy that owned the North Drive-In, I mean, it was in the paper. Yeah. I, I, mean, I remember seeing it. We haven't hired anybody yet. We have nobody under contract. So I don't know what he's talking okay. about. But now, he's uh, under contract with Greg that we inherit. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what he was talking about. Okay. He has a contract with Greg Gibson, okay. but that we will inherit that contract. Okay. But we haven't hired anybody to do anything yet. Okay. We are doing a phase one environmental right now and a building walkthrough next this week um, to document everything. And then we will then, based on that, we'll hire people to do the actual engineering and okay. architectural. Well, it's, it's, it's down the road a ways, but maybe that's where we could have this big party that... Uh, one of our citizens <laughs> wants us to have. So. Yeah, there you go. I think it's a great project. The community feedback's been phenomenal. The, the CIB is going to do something with that. So, yeah. and it'll tie in with the uh, convention center. Yes, all everything. So hopefully you'll be supportive of that. Just not ready to. Councilperson Crossum. Yes, the uh, parking garage project mm -hmm. is that. Um, the parking garage that we've previously heard about uh, located at uh, where the old school corporation building was? Yeah, I mean, that's still an option on the table, yes. Is there any other obvious place for it? Not really, but I mean, I, it's, this is, we got to find out where the hotel's going to go. And so that's, that's the last conversations that we've had with them is it would go on the side of, and that's why we acquired that property to put right. it at 7th and Wabash. Okay. That's all I can tell you at this point. I don't know anything different. Okay. They haven't really advanced it much um, for a lot of reasons. Um, a lot of interest rates is probably a big part of it, but I think at some point they'll figure that out and decide when to move forward. I can't just can't speak for them. Okay. And, and, and you did say that they're ready. they've already received ready? Well, they haven't grant. got the money, but they've been approved. They've received the grant. Yep, okay. yep, $4.3 million. Okay, I yield. Council Person Nation. Um, <clears throat> I was going to ask about that ready money too. Uh, which round of funding did 4.3 million get? Ready one. Ready one. Yep. It's a done deal. And um, was that part of the, what we, we asked for 50 and got 20? Uh, yes. Okay. And four of the, over 4 million of that was. Because first. remember, remember, this is the key point of that. The more private money that comes to the table, the less match that the not-for-profits and government and others have to have. Remember, there's different layers of match. Yep. So if you don't have a project like this in your proposal, you're probably not going to get funded for everything else you've got in the proposal. When we go to Ready2, we're going to have to find some big private project to put in there if the rules are the same. I'm assuming they're going to be the same to make all of that work. You have to have an X number amount of private dollars to come to the table to get all of your projects approved. It's an interesting grant system. There were a lot of complaints about it after last year, and so we expect them to make some changes to it. The IEDC is responsible for that, but we've not seen anything yet. Okay. You also mentioned $3 million of Indiana Economic Development Corporation funding. Is that already approved? It, it will be. It just it, It's on a cyclical thing. So they like the project. They already approved it through Ready. It's some dollars that they have control over. Okay. Um, we'll have to apply for them, but it's a very high success rate. They've, I mean, we, they've already approved the project. You know what I mean? Through Ready. Okay. Martha asked about uh, the school corporation lot. I think everybody's assuming that this project is going mm -hmm. on the school corporation. Yep, property. I assume that too. Uh, and um, now, as I understand it, that property is owned by the CIB still, right? Or uh, is it redevelopment? Re, I believe it's under redevelopment, if I remember right. But it could have been, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't want to go on record with that because I don't remember if that last transactions happened or not. I just remember that the. If I the, think it's under redevelopment, but I don't quote me on that. I apologize, but I don't know if that other final step had taken place or not. Okay. In the end, 
a government unit who yes. own uh, that great big rectangle of property. Yep. And it sounds like there will be two structures or two construction projects that will happen on that big rectangle. Yes. One will be a hotel or a combination of two hotels, and the other one will be a parking structure. Yeah. Right. Uh, and for simplicity's sake, let's just say that each one takes up half of that footprint. Um, maybe one part will be bigger. Maybe the garage part will be a bigger part. I don't know. Um, do you see the need to, will the property be subdivided uh, so that uh, the investors in the hotel have their land with their building on it and then the government entity that formerly owned the whole rectangle will just own the part that the garage is built on? Probably. I guess we'll leave that up to our bond attorneys and all of our folks to figure that stuff out because there's tax implications for, yep. you know, if you remember, we had some of these same conversations. We're going to build that parking garage back at 7th and Cherry. Yep. Same kind of issues. So. I don't profess to know all those legal ins and outs, but yes, it could be that they own all that. Maybe they lease it for a dollar from us and we own the land and they own the buildings and we own the parking yards. I'm not sure. Right. We have not had those discussions. So I, we'll have to see what the attorneys say the best model is in order for us to figure that stuff out. And I'll just take this opportunity to reiterate one more time on the record that if government is going to build another parking garage on Wabash Avenue, adjacent to a hotel, across from a bunch of shops, it should include ground floor commercial space, not just a parking structure. Um, and I think that that is worth paying more for. I'll put that on the record too, uh, if that's what the situation requires. Um, I, you know, we, we're in a unique position here. I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about city as developer of prime real estate on Wabash Avenue with a huge expensive project going up with private money right next to it. Um, I think we need to figure out how to do that and not just say, oh, it's too complicated, uh, like we have managed to do with all three parking garages that we've built so far. There's not a significant commercial anything in any of them, except for the bus station, uh, which was programmed in at the insistence of people who were involved in it, in the way that I'm trying to insist that we have ground floor commercial in this structure. I'll stop there. I'm sure you saw that coming from miles away. Uh, First time I've ever heard that, Councilman. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you, I, I always carry your message whenever I talk, whenever those conversations come up. You know, I get... Some people, I mean, nobody disagrees with that, but we don't really know in today's dollars how much that's going to cost. We have to add another floor onto the garage in order to get, I don't know. Yeah. And so we'll go through those and find out what that looks like, and then everybody will know. I, I, I'm not sure. Thanks. I, but yeah. Thanks for uh, I, I, I never forget that that's your, say it again. <laughs> I think of, I immediately say, Todd Nation's going to say, so it's, it's all good. Okay. I thought I, I yield on that. Okay. Any further questions on that item? All right. Next item, Mayor. And that would be the last one. Um, Terror Humane Society. Um, this project kind of came up earlier, um, late last year, early this year, in conversations with the shelter. It started with there's not enough room for us to take animals to. So there's times where we have nowhere to take them. That's a problem. We have a contract. They have to have a place for us to take animals when we pick them up off the street. And so then they, they were thinking about creating a clinic on site. So that's how this kind of blossomed into a project. Um, this would be them building a new facility that would have a you know, medical facility for animals in it. Uh, being able to do low-cost spay and neuter services and other variety of things. I mean, they're not trying to steal business from veterinarians. That's not the point. It's being able to deal with their own stuff, have their own vet, and deal with their, and then also have it open to the public certain days of the week. So I was supportive of it, and the commissioners were because we need more kennels that are dedicated to the city and the county that we always have a place to take animals to. 
So um, in those conversations, they've gone out and they've already done all their legwork. They've got a design. They've got some bids. They know who's going to build it. Um, it's a roughly $750,000 project. And so they would fund 250, county would fund 250, and we would fund 250. And it gives us a low cost spay and neuter location, gives us additional kennels, and then public access to a lower cost clinic. Um, so they're wanting to do this project this year. So. I've got July on here. That may be aggressive too. All of these dates could be aggressive. I get that. But I'm trying to communicate this to find out when I put it on paper, then all of a sudden we'll find out if they, everybody can step up to these dates. Council. So this is kind of a small request in this big scheme. Council personnel. Yeah, this isn't on that topic, but I've got a number of other thoughts. I are we, are we done with Terre Haute Humane Shelter? Okay, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor, I I know I've seen something within the last year concerning the Flat Street project on, on Wabash. Uh -huh. And 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 when and what source of funds will, will deal with that? Is that a wastewater project? It'll probably be a combination of things. We don't we have to get it designed and get it estimated okay. first. Is is the timing after these other facilities are built? Which facilities? The As hotel and parking garage, hotels and parking garage. Um, so would that if up? possible, we could do the first section before the hotels would be done. I, I can't answer that here okay. today, but I, there's a possibility, okay. yes. Okay. I did. But not all of it, not all the whole thing. Okay. I took the liberty of, of talking to uh, Steve Wilt about the involvement of redevelopment in the housing portion of this, uh -huh. uh, didn't get any kind of response from them yet, but I'm wondering about the use of lots that the city has yes. in that and, and perhaps even some more uh, uh, demolition of uh, buildings and, and so on and so forth. I, I guess we'll just see what I hear from them. Uh, well, we've got a lot of empty lots now, but some of them you can't build a house on it because it doesn't meet state codes. You have to have two lots side by side. I, I understand. And so we've identified all those. And okay. as part of this housing, there may be a little bit more incentive for somebody to build a house in one of those areas because we can waive the liens and everything else that's on it, you know, tie it together okay. here and do okay. that. And that's all, that so I that's kind of brewing out there, but I don't, I don't know what Steve will say, but that's okay. kind of well, where, that's where we're what headed. What matters is what Thrive will say. I'll have it no, there. it's whatever we tell Thrive what's going to be well, the plan. Okay. okay. Well, sooner or later we need to tell them something there. They have uh, something, but they we haven't have, seen what they. I'm waiting for them to come back to us. Okay. Okay. I'd still uh, uh, <laughs> encourage some uh, uh, city parks deferred maintenance projects. You know, if there are some out there that we could do with uh, with ARPA, why don't why don't we use ARPA funds and and do it? Uh, uh, that uh, is a, another suggestion I have. I, I didn't hear anything about uh, RJL today and the uh, uh, Mr. Marvel from RJL uh -huh. being involved in much in this granting process that we're talking about. Well, they're more helping with the accountability component. So we either pay Baker Tilly to do all of it or we use okay. Baker Tilly to a point and RJL Solutions will carry it on out okay. for the next few years. Okay. That's, then, the, that's the where we're headed. And then what do we pay on RJL and um, Baker Tilly? It, I, my guess is we'll have at least $500,000 in everybody that's out there helping us with this. Okay. And that includes Thrive or Thrive, United Way, RJL, and Baker Tilly? At least 500000 for all that. At yes. least five. i I'm just, I don't have proposals yet, so I need to see what they're... Okay. So who's the, who's the contact person at Thrive? Ryan Keller. Ryan Keller, the director. Okay. If I wanted to talk to somebody at Thrive, that's who it is. That's who I would call. Yep. Ryan Keller. K-E-L-L-E-R? -E -E yep. Okay. I've met him. Uh, and United Way? And I... Um, Danielle... I've met her. They, they, yeah, they've got. Is Danielle or Abby? Well, yeah, I guess so. both of them. They're co ceo I, okay. Okay. I'm not sure. You try the one of them, then they'll then, point it to the other one. Then I presume, since this is a, 
uh, a public meeting, we could go ahead and reach out to potential grantees and talk to them a little bit about this stuff that's coming down the road, you mm -hmm. know, to be ready. Yep. So they can respond, you know, in a timely manner if they're so interested in, in doing that. So. Yep. Absolutely. I yield. Any further discussion, Council? Uh, Councilperson Crossan. Back to the paying the consultants and uh, the grant grantor agencies. Um, how much have we already spent on that? Well, we haven't spent anything with anybody except for Baker Tilly so far. RJL hasn't charged the they, city. And no, they've for been all doing all that on our existing contract. Well, then they've been paid. Well, yes, but they're doing a hundred other things too. I mean, they're just doing that as. Does our does our current contract? We pay five thousand dollars a month to them. Okay. For a lot of things, this being included in that. Okay. But they want to bump that up to capture some of this. We just haven't done that yet. Okay. And do they give us a, a detailed rundown of what they of the work they've done for us for the month, or is it? Not structured that way. No, it's just a flat amount. I can come up with some. I mean, they can do it. I mean, she's probably got some kind of report. I, I just wondered how it was. I've never asked for that because I know that we probably are underpaying them dramatically. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. And you look at the resources. Well, I know they do a lot of work for us, but I, that's not my question. I mean, I'm not. Right. I'm not. Yeah, I just I don't have I, judging one way or the other. I've not on broken that. it down by projects. Okay. So. Okay. And Baker Tilly, same thing. Baker Tilly, we've paid them along the way, but I don't know what the total is so far. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, I can get that for you. I just, I don't know. You know, they did some stuff early on, and then they were on pause for a while. Now they're back engaged again just because of our timing. Okay. Are you? Who, who prepared this uh, grant agreement? Do you know? Um, Baker Tilly, or did they have an, an attorney do it? Or I don't know okay. who actually did it. I'm not sure. Okay, but that would have been in their ballpark, you think, as opposed to RGL? Or yeah, I I'm not sure. Okay, I, I, they just they gave us that when we had that meeting on the 11th. Everybody got a copy of that in a little zip file. I, I don't know. Tammy and I were talking about that earlier. I can't see who all of us on the distribution list because it's just it. got we a did, name. Did, I, did, I, I pulled it, it up a while oh ago. God, Jordan was just the presentation from that day. Um, PowerPoint. So I don't know who all it went to, but I got it. I but just, I don't think I, I got it. And I didn't yeah. ask that yet. I just, and that's fine. And it's a draft. It's I mean, a, it'll. That's more of a curiosity question. I just wanted else. to give you an example of what it will probably look like. It'll turn into just Terre Haute only on it. Right now, it says Terre Haute okay. County. Okay. That kind of stuff. So, you know, as I see this, uh, uh, Thrive is a subrecipient, and then they'll they'll be further subrecipients of Thrive. Right. Uh, so I mean, it's it starts to get a little. Uh, Thrive will have to spend a lot of time managing those, those, those subrecipients things. versus us doing yeah, that. Yeah, and I, and I would imagine Leslie's fine with that. Yeah, it's, it, it, it would be overwhelming, so. <laughs> and Eddie. <laughs> I said yes, too. We're, we're managing our own projects, and we'll deal with all that, but these, the rest of the stuff, it's important that we have somebody else helping us with that. Yeah. It's just too much. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, I, as I mentioned. I, I totally We've already agree. got thousands of man hours in, and I know I said this last time, but we'll have another thousand in this probably. I mean, there's a lot of people working on all this, a lot. We got to do it right. Yeah, this this has been great today. I thank you. Hope it was helpful. And we can do more. Let me. I think what I want to do. So I guess I'm, I don't know if you have any more questions, but I think what I want to do now is. I just I put this together for today, so I apologize you didn't get anything for today because I finished this at three o'clock. I didn't. This wasn't what I was going to do tonight. I thought I had more time because we were going to do what we did on the 11th tonight. Just back to that again. That was my plan. Um, some of these things I'm pushing people a little hard. Maybe I, I need to sit down with them and really work through this and see if we need to adjust some of the dates. Um, I just, this is where we're at today. This is what I would like to do. I know it will change some, but 
I don't know how much yet. And I just think we got to keep moving because of what I said earlier. I, hopefully that doesn't become an issue. But if it does, we got to move really fast. My thinking is, um, I know it's been brought up by a number of council members that we may need more than this one meeting to further discuss this. I know we have, what, nine days until our next council meeting, I think, nine days. So maybe over the next nine days, we consider what we've talked about this evening, and we can talk at our next regularly scheduled meeting uh, as to if we feel we need a, a uh, another meeting with the mayor to discuss on further. Just a heads up, you have 20 CF forms so far. Ah, <laughs> looking forward to that. <laughs> um, if there be no further discussion, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. It has been moved by Councilperson Bowen and seconded by Councilperson Nation that we adjourn. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you all everybody. for being here.